I almost never have to use wheels to move this chicken tractor just because of that lengthened skid. So that's how it goes together. And then the door tucks right in there to be flush inside the conduit frame. I've got a fix for the all too common problem of these Justin Rhodes style nest boxes falling out. Today I'm going to talk about some improvements I've made to some of the most popular types of chicken tractors, making them easier and more efficient to use. This includes the stress-free chicken tractor from John Siskovich, the Joel Salatin style chicken tractor, as well as aspects of Justin Rhodes' Chickshaw. So let's just jump right into those improvements and how you can do them on your chicken tractors. Starting with this Siskovich style chicken tractor, probably the most visibly different is the door that tucks right into the curved top of the A-frame roof instead of having the square uh, framing. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, the next readily evident is these skids. They are half inch conduit, EMT conduit, just like are used for the roof, but they're, they're just made to go under the entire length of the skids and then wrap up and attach to the frame. So here's the finished product with the full skid installed. The joint happens like this. Oh, I need to just beat that a little bit. That's better, a little finessing with the hammer. So now I just need to add a skid to that other side. It's about 15 feet worth of conduit per side. It makes it a lot easier to slide over the ground even without putting the wheels on the back. I've done different versions of these skids, starting with the A-frame chicken tractor. Those skids are a little shorter, I just didn't, it was, it was kind of the first iteration of that idea to make it slide easier along the ground. After building that though, I realized that I should really lengthen the amount that the, that the conduit comes away from the main base frame so that when you lift up on one end, it'll pivot further back here as if it was on the wheels and therefore lift this back frame piece a little bit higher off the ground than if the skid was you know starting to curve up right there. I also did it on my Salatin style tractor. Those stick out further and that works really well. I almost never have to use wheels to move this chicken tractor just because of how much that lengthened skid helps lift that back frame piece off of the ground. So another thing that I've done to improve both this and my Salatin style tractors is this handle. All it is is a half inch plumbing pipe, just a you know, galvanized pipe that I pulled out of an old remodel. And then on each end, it goes to a 90 degree elbow and then a short nipple and then a half inch T and then another section of pipe or nipple and it's just put together so that the fittings are at this angle essentially the middle part of the T faces straight up it sits pointing straight up when it's laying on the ground like that so that goes so that it can slip under these bolts and these bolts are drilled in the same location as the Siskovich instructions say so it's an inch and three quarter from in from the end and down from the top. I just added some additional hardware to the bolt here. All we do, we have a flat washer that goes on first and then a little just short scrap section of conduit. Another flat washer and then a half inch wing nut. So that just goes on finger tight and like I said that conduit section will just protect the threads. So I added some additional pieces of wood there. A little scrap of 2x4 plus a piece of scrap plywood. Get it in there just above the T. Um, and then as you pry down on the handle, you push down, it lifts up until it seats itself into position right there. That plywood just protects the wire and makes it all work. I don't take the handle on and off. Every time I move it, I just drop it on the ground and it's ready for the next move the next morning. But I can remove it and put it on the 
the back of the tractor if I want to move the other direction. Another modification I did was lengthening the front of the skid by four inches, and that's to accommodate for the wheels being able to install either here or here. Both sides are identical. Another thing I did was um, attach the tarp differently. I didn't have eyelets in all the right spots to be able to zip tie it to the frame. They didn't want to add grommets and mess with all that. So I just took some wood lath and I just screw it. I just sandwich it through. I have screws coming from the outside into some scrap wood on the inside. It's a very simple, effective method. And then I did the same thing here on these vertical legs. I just screwed some wood lath on, same along the bottom. I'd say the improvement that I like the most as far as the aesthetics goes is the change I made to the door. So before I put the tarp on this, I want to show the details of how this is all fastened together. So you have one by four just butts into this bottom, and then I have just scraps. That is a kind of a half lap joint there. And then it is in the same, same plane as this conduit, so it tucks under it. Then I have another piece of one by four that just goes behind. It's just cut with a jigsaw to the right curve. So that's how it goes together. And then the door tucks right in there to be flush inside the conduit frame. Um, I believe this is probably a two inch screw and then three inch, three inch. And I did that one, one reason was just for looks. It looks nice and clean and trim. The other reason though is for if I wanna put a metal or plastic roof on here, like a corrugated roof, um, or even just a section on the top here. And if I wanted to extend it out past the frame, then the door is not gonna interf interfere with that. It's gonna tuck underneath anything that happens with the roof, as opposed to a square frame sticking up out here, like is shown in the plans, where you'd, you would be able to just butt the roof up to the back side of that, but it is always gonna be, that frame is always gonna be out exposed to the weather. Depending on what I end up using this chicken tractor for, uh, like once these meat birds are done and we're into winter, I may even extend this roofing out a little ways to give me a little sheltered area. Hey friends, I just wanted to pop in here and let you know that what you've been watching is actually a short excerpt out of a 60 minute long masterclass that I taught on laying out your homestead property fixer upper rescue tips and innovations for easier farm work. I originally taught this class in August as part of the green setting summit um, put on by the green dream project. And it was a week long summit. After that week though, all of those videos got put into a paid membership access only status. And so the general public did, has not had access to this masterclass video uh, since then. I wanted to do something special for you though in appreciation for following me, for supporting my channel, and that is I want to give you access to this full length video plus the companion uh, PDF guide all for free. It will just be for a limited time uh, but you, once you get in and access it, you will have access to it to stream the video and view the PDF forever as well as download both of them for free. In that masterclass, I do a deep dive into details on laying out your property, whether you are starting a place from scratch, like we did originally, or fixing up a, a rundown place like we are now, how to go about setting up an efficient homestead property um, that will serve you well for years and years to come. I also talk about the Number one, first project that you should work on the first year uh, on a new property, um, talking about specifically a fixer upper, it could save you thousands of dollars of repairs down the road if you deal with it right away. So you wanna make sure and catch that. Um, I, I go into these chicken tractor modifications that we're talking about today. And then I also introduce my two favorite, most used work saving devices that I've developed for our homestead. One of which is this pulp onion wood chopper. That's how I chop wood, firewood here year round. Um, it's even something that I can use 
with only one arm. I, I injured this shoulder um, spring of last year. I dislocated it and hasn't been the same since. It's a lot better, but still I have to be really careful with it. And so I can chop wood with only one hand if I need to, <laughs> which is pretty awesome. I also developed a special jack that you can use to lift, to spread, to push, to even pull. I give you a little overview on how you could even build your own bunion jack. There's a lot more on there, but, but for right now, I'm going to get back to chicken tractors. First, I'll just let you know how to get a copy of this masterclass and PDF down in the description below. Click the link that will take you to a page where you can sign up for a free learner's account on my um, education platform. And you can download these really valuable resources and keep them forever. So with that, I will jump back into chicken tractors. When I first built the frame, hey buddy, you're being loud. You're being really loud. Go drink your snack, it's still out there. When I first built the frame for this chicken tractor, I was still recovering from a dislocated shoulder. So I was limited to how much I used my skill saw and hammer and chisel and all that. So I elected to just put it all together with pocket screws as opposed to half lapping the joints kind of like this. That's the only part right here and right here, the only parts on this whole chicken tractor where I did, um, you know, cut and chisel it out like that. Everywhere else is just a simple pocket screw joint. Those are very easy to put together with a simple Craig jig tool. I didn't have to spend a long time cutting away and chiseling away. I just screwed it all together. So far it's holding up really well. Um, all of my lumber is just used lumber. It's non-treated dug fir. It's not cedar or anything. Because it was old and weathered, it splits you know, more easily than brand new lumber. I didn't want to mess with reducing the thickness of it to half to three quarter thickness on long, you know, important structural rails like this is because that would create a, a weak spot. I just kept the full strength and I just screwed it in with the pocket screws and it works so far really well. In all of my chicken tractors I've hung uh, feeders and waterers with wire as opposed to string because I like the longevity and adjustability of that. And then I can also make it quickly attach and detach. Quick, quick release basically. So my waterer hangs right here. But right now I just unhooked it. I brought it outside so I can clean it and fill it up and then I just hook it right back on again. So this is another example of a solid handle that I put on this um, more Salatin style tractor. I just screwed it through with a bolt right there through the frame and then a nut, a washer and a nut on the inside. That basically makes it so that it pivots right on there. It's permanently attached and I just pick it up and pull. But I added a board on the top here as a stop. That makes it so when I pull the chicken tractor I'm in full control of what's going on. I can sort of push it backward also if I need to, but um, say if I'm going down a hill it won't um, race toward me every time I lift it up. And I also, my toes are, I can stay long, far away from the chicken tractor and I'm not having to tippy toe right close to it like I would if I just had a rope to hold on to. I've got a fix for the all too common problem of these Justin Rhodes style nest boxes falling out. So though I love this nest box system, that's why I put it in this old remodeled chicken tractor, um, there is that problem where it's only held in by the front and back rails and um, it can have a tendency to have this bottom part just slip slip over the edge and fall down like that. So especially um, with our kids checking that for eggs, um, they'll often, you know, not have it seated all the way. Then it doesn't take much for a chicken to jump in and have it fall down. So now on to the fix. All I did was use four three inch screws per nest box. There's about two inches of the screw sticking out. You can see how far down I set the screws roughly three quarters of an inch or so. It's not gonna actually rest on these screws yet, so they aren't holding it from being fully seated. All they're there for is just a safety. What happens if the nest box comes loose is it just falls and got, gets caught on those screws. And they're strong enough to hold the chicken in there, no problem. The chickens could get in and out, lay eggs all they wanted to, 
and those nest boxes would not fall out. A benefit of doing just these screws instead of putting mesh or hardware cloth or something under here is poop and straw and stuff needs to just freely fall out the bottom of these of these nest boxes. It'll all just drain out the bottom. Go ahead and try it on your nest box system and see how it works for you. But so far, like I said, I have not had a single bird escape. I've often found them, the nest boxes unseated, but it hasn't been, uh, I haven't had any issues. Well, that is it for my modifications to date on the most, the three most popular chicken, stra chicken tractor styles. One more time, go to the link in the description below to download your own copy of this full length 60 minute masterclass on laying out your homestead property fixer upper rescue tips and innovations for easier farm work. Thanks again. I'm Tom Wiley and I'll catch you on the next one.